Hi, I'm Jay. This is Phil's V10 M3 project. Welcome back to another week of Lonely Workshop. Um, this week, I am starting to prep the engine bay for paint. Um, we are removing any, as Craig would put it, buckets from wheel tubs. Just removing the paint, removing any holes, filling them in with weld, grinding them flat. Right, just had a little FaceTime with Phil. It's quite hard with the, without him here to run the decisions past, but there is if this will focus there. As you can see, I like to keep the instruction manual close by for reference, but an ugly bracket here on the back of the strutter, which, you know, seems did nothing. So, looking at this flappy, messy ear now, what we're gonna do is drill that off, uh, cut it flat across there so the wiring can still run through it neatly and uh, make the strut top prettier. pieces in its new home, the bit. Um, top of the strut looks much better. I'm just gonna put a little bit of seam weld on the back there just so this can't vibrate about and just weld up the little marks I've made with the drill drilling it off. Um, then we'll smooth it out, square that up and call it done. There we go. How much better does that look? I think the next thing we're gonna do is just carry on removing any paint because the last thing I wanna do is trying to um, paint over something that's manky or not right. So we might as well bare metal it at this point and start fresh. Before we get on with removing the paint, a little bit of Googling has showed that it looks like these two brackets here mount the heat shield which is no longer there, so they can go away. Let's smooth this thing out a little bit more. You get to witness the fun that I've had this morning, I guess, by drilling and grinding these up. give you a guide to biscuits this week because that was getting out of hand and I've had to stop but if you're gonna aim a grinder at your GoPro you better watch out because I've just had to spend I don't know how long um, well basically I've had to lacquer the lens to smooth out all the lovely hot bits of metal which stuck to it so yeah hopefully if I can build that up enough that's gonna fix the GoPro well that'd be a bit rubbish um, but you know we're getting on with this Getting that wire wheel right in there, you know, digging them out. And yeah, it's coming up all right. And you know, the amount of effort it takes in here is nothing compared to underneath. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say a pleasure, but um, you know, certainly nothing like the underside. Anyway, better get on with it. So just stopped to take a break because the death wheel starting to uh, lose its spikes and look at these overalls are so safe because it's pretty committed to try and stab me in the balls. It's not looking too bad in here now. 
getting towards the end of Tuesday now. Um, got quite a lot of the paint cleaned off. As I, as I said earlier, it's nothing like the, the under seal underneath. It doesn't come off too badly, so, you know, we'll leave it like this for tonight. And tomorrow we will attempt to finish in primer. That would be nice. I did just hear engine noises while I was doing that. Let's see if we can make Craig do a burnout. This is the genuine first drive of this, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's moved around the workshop like, but... You're gonna roll it out and do a burnout now? <laughs> Maybe not quite that committed. I keep trying to turn the key to start it. Oh, it's... There's a button. We're not used to these posh things, are we? The problem is the BM you press and let go. This one you have to press and hold. I'm quiet. Sporty like enough. I'll have to do until I get the back box. And we have that weight now as well. It's not all, it's like a real car. Well, as they say in Essex, spin them out, mate! <laughs> I thought that might work. Well, that's how you test it. Things falling out, attacking me. I'm like, ah! <laughs> Don't leave them. That's all right. Fully tested now, ready, yeah. to, ready to take it home. It is made the voice, so I think it's uh, going home time. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Morning. Bright and early on Wednesday. Uh, plans for today, I'll finish wire wheeling this engine bay um, and then get a coat of the RC900 um, rust converter on it. So I guess all that's left to do is uh, suit up and get on with it. First task is let's see how the GoPro repairs have worked. Actually, well, doesn't look too bad. Hopefully that's gonna work again. That'd be nice, wouldn't it, if I hadn't ruined it? So let's set that up. Bit of drums and bass, bit of wire wheeling, bit of painting, you know how this is. You know, as I'm working my way around this thing, um, I'm gonna do Phil a favor today. Since we all know realistically, he's not getting aircon back. I'm gonna take this ugly pipe out and make it go away so we can fill this hole in nicely and not have an ugly air fitting in the engine bay anymore. So you can say thanks later, Phil, but this is going in the bin. False with me. But victory is mine. See you later, aircon.
Right, that's the paint now down to a level that, you know, I'm gonna call almost acceptable. And um, there's a few little nooks and crannies that I can't get in with the uh, wire wheel. And I have a few, um, a few of the seam welds that we did that need, you know, just bits of splatter like, like that removing um, any, any sort of high spots or anything that's just a bit ugly. I'm gonna use the uh, air sander on it. Just, just you know, knock those down. Got the spot wells to take off where we had the um, the manifold or the, the collector uh, mounted last week for scanning. And yeah, just generally uh, tidy up anything that's a little bit rough. Um, as we get towards, you know, we get towards masking, I guess. Only thing left to say is, rut, 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 roll the beats. a bit more of that we're properly getting there now um, just got nooks and crannies like this that I can't get the wire wheel into so back to my favorite pastime in the whole world a bit of hand sanding but soon we'll be on to masking I'm trying to film this but we seem to have shouty Birmingham men outside the back door so maybe we'll have to give it a minute is that it we're we ready Thanks, Terry. Right. We are now at the point that we are going to mask this thing up, wipe it down, and square a bit of primer at it. Um, been debating this, but it looks like I've got to take the um, windscreen bottom panel off. It's such a dust trap that it's just going to cause me misery um, in the next process. So I'll whip the wipers off, take that off, get dirt everywhere again blow that off and then we'll start putting some uh, masking down get ready to shoot some paint glad I did it now because that could have made the next stage very frustrating a little bit of a history lesson uh, here looking at the old Scott panel just reminded me that's the original color of the car um, BMW would call it carbon black but it's basically dark blue um, it certainly wasn't black enough for Phil I always found it very amusing when he when he used to have this car how sad he was about that being the black and in the end he had it painted the blackest of all the blacks yeah fun fact I just came to me while I was wiping it we're getting there boys time to get some masking either well I guess I'm gonna be using that static film so Let's get the front of the car covered and then we can paint some paint. Right, for today's purposes, I'm gonna call that masked. Right then, so, shutters open. I'm locked in so I don't gas uh, poor Nick who's working in the warehouse. Got a few cans of the Dinatrol RC900 uh, shaken up, ready to go. Um, basically, just in case you didn't watch any of the videos that, did, that we did where I spent about a month grinding the floor off and covering that, um, this is what we use on bare metal. Um, it's a rust converter and primer in one. It dries gloss, which I'm, I'm not a massive fan of. Um, I think I'm gonna come back in in the morning once this is set and um, scotch pad it back to a flat finish and then we'll start with high build primers, fillers, um, and then the blackest of blacks to cover it all up but GoPro's ready, engine bay's ready, wish me luck I'm going in. There's coat one done, um, just in case anyone's wondering, I managed to cover you know, the first coat on this engine bay with was basically half a tin. Um, you know, give you an idea how far it goes, because I know it's actually quite expensive if you've got to buy it, so. Yeah, a tin would do two coats on, you know, front of the car like that. I've left the GoPro running. Um, hopefully, you'll see the uh, 
the magic of this stuff, the, the, the way that it changes colour, like those t-shirts we used to have when we were kids that made you look sweaty. What were they called? Global Hyper Colour, that's what they were called. Sweaty Pit t-shirts, remember those? But yeah, I'll give that a, a little bit of time to tack off and we'll, we'll put another coat on. Tack off. <laughs> That's the second coat completed. Just about got it out of one can. There's not a lot left in that now, but you know, give you an idea of how far um, a can of that will go. Um, you know, I'll just I'll just zoom in a little bit here so you can sort of see the um, the finish you get with it. It's it's very like a lacquer. It's a very weird, weird and unnatural thing to put over a bare metal. Um, like I say, I'm not. I'm not committed to just go straight over the top with primer. I'm going to key it first because it just feels so wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd give you an interesting finish if you were one of those people that likes your car to look like scrap, I guess, you know, rat look folks. Um, you could do this and then, you know, clear coat over the top and your car wouldn't dissolve into nothing in England, but you know, each to their own. There's a shiny manky engine bay for you for tonight. I guess I'll see you again in the morning and we'll be uh, keying that off and working our way up through primers and fillers. Can't wait. Morning. Oh, tripped over a box. Oh, never mind. Well, another day. Uh, turns out that even though it's not been particularly cold at the moment, the paint is still a little bit tacky this morning, so fired up the old heater without permission, but I'm sure it'll be all right. I'm um, going to give that, I don't know, half an hour or whatever on heat to uh, to hopefully not be tacky so I can move on with this. Uh, in the meantime, Starkey wants me to dig the S15 out so I've got a bit of a project on there. So I'll get on with that and I'll see you later once I'm uh, back working on the M3. Well, it's about an hour later now. Um, been moving the, the heat around a bit to try and uh, you know get to all the different areas and um, the firewall now has lost its tack so yeah I'm happy with that I'm going to um, just try because you can see the finish here it's, it's like a almost like a high gloss um, lacquered finish which you know nothing's going to stick to as far as I'm concerned so I'm just going to try um, knocking the shine off it with uh, just a grey scotch pad but you know we'll do this live so if it all goes wrong you'll you'll see you know let's not hide We reckon, yeah, that's losing its sheen, isn't it? So, can I see that? Yeah, you can look at that, not shiny anymore. I'm happy with that. So, yeah, I guess I'll set up the GoPro and we'll uh, stick a bit of drawing base on, and you will see me map this engine bay. What fun! While I'm doing this, it takes me back to uh, work experience from school. You still have that now, is that illegal now? But yeah, basically you used to send uh, 13 or 14 year old kids into people's works to experience misery. And uh, on mine, they made me flat a whole Metro Turbo for paint. And I remember sitting there thinking, this isn't for me. I'm never gonna work in a garage. And look at me now, I don't I hate to think how many years later, like, 26, 27 years later, and I'm here, flat in paint. But you know, could be worse. Who's the boss of gloss now? Not you, Autoglim, it's me. Was it Autoglim that's the boss of gloss? Somebody was the boss of gloss. 
one of those polishy types. Right, you join me when I'm about halfway through flattening this. And all the time that I'm working with it, I'm just thinking, I hope this is stuck, because you know, it's, it's just unnatural. It doesn't feel like primer. So I have decided that we're gonna give it a quick cross hatch test in a, in a place that doesn't matter. So I've chosen this piece. We'll put a few scores in it. You know, we're doing this live. I haven't tested this, so hopefully, you know, it won't make this stuff look terrible, but we use parcel tape because it's got a bit of stick to it. Well, Rich, I'm doing science. You're doing what? Science. No, you're not. I've done it now. You've ruined my video. How have I ruined your video? Because I was doing science here, showing what a good product this is, and you've just come in shouting about something. Yeah, but look at the new, we're a shop, and check out these lights. Check out the Drickwork shop channel and the website. Yeah, how lovely. How lovely. G36, lovely. Uh, not for people of my age. You children can buy those. Anyway, this seems to work. So, a little more comfortable with it now. I'll get on with the other side on my own. I think you've seen enough of the flatting. The joy of doing it on camera is all you lot are there to uh, spot what I haven't done right. So, <laughs> no pressure. I hate sanding. Anyway, we are now pretty flatted off in here. Uh, I'm not gonna call it 100% finished. I'm gonna give it one last little go over. But um, while we're still waiting for the paint delivery, it's time to start masking. Uh, properly I need to mask up all these holes from the inside because once we actually start um, spraying bright uh, gray primer at it you know over spray is going to be much more of an issue so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time now doing that um, in the hope that once that's done uh, the paint and the masking paper will be here and we can uh, finish this and get some paint sprayed on well it's getting on in the day a bit um, still haven't had the paint delivery which I kind of need but uh, I do have a couple of cans of primer uh, in stock here in the workshop, so I'm going to start with those. Just going to lay a couple of um, light dusting coats down first, and then hopefully when the high build comes in, in the next, who knows, pretty soon hopefully, um, I can get a good few coats of that on, because it's Easter weekend this weekend, and if I can give it three or four days to dry, that'll be perfect. So, yeah, wish me luck. about as much as I dare to put on as a first coat. I'm um, gonna leave that to, to dry for a few minutes and we'll go in and do the same again. Build it up slowly to a nice even color. Um, and then by then hopefully the high build will be here and we can just smash that and leave it for the weekend. Sweet. up all the paint that I had um, in the cupboards in the workshop and so far so good but just as we speak the man comes to the rescue with the actual paint order so we can actually do it properly now which will be nice so we'll give that a few minutes to dry and we'll hit it with high build and hope for no reactions right that is one full can of high, bin, high build um, on the car now no no terrible problems no anything really so uh, I guess that's this week. Um, it's now Thursday evening. It's Easter for four days now. Um, I'm going to continue just to put another few coats of this on because the more I build up, the better in my eyes. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll see you on Tuesday morning. Nice and early. Cup of tea. Maybe some biscuits. We'll see. Have a nice weekend.
At Driftworks, we've helped over 50,000 happy customers since 2004. Our huge online parts store is simple to use with superb shipping rates to anywhere in the world and finance options available for UK customers. We live and breathe wheel fitment, so if you have any questions about your own car or any of our products before placing an order, please drop us an email at shop at driftworks.com or give us a call. Thanks for watching.